My earliest memory was about television, was about TV. I always knew that I would be doing television. And that was nurtured by my grandparents. I used to spend the night at my Papa Earl and my Grandma Betty's, and they would let me stay up late to watch Johnny Carson. Well, at least the monologue. And I would take my little tape recorder and I would tape the monologue from the speaker. And the next morning, my grandparents, who had a little bitty house in the country, had a giant rock in front of their house. I would play the monologue and I would get on that rock and that rock signified, was, represented my curtain, Johnny's curtain. That was when I would start the show. And over the years with The Jason Show, we've had a lot of looks, we've had various sets, and I've been grateful for them all. But we've, we've never had a curtain, and look, I'm grateful for everything. But actually, the thing I'm most grateful for is 10 years. After 10 years, we are still here. And now, I finally have my curtain. Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Every day, every day. We do it our own way. Sing it out every day. Yeah, let's make it a good day. Every day, every day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, here's Jason. Welcome to my last day here at Channel 9. <laughs> welcome to the Jason Show and welcome to season 10. <laughs> Remember that scene in The Little Mermaid where uh, uh, Ariel signed a deal with the sea witch that if she took her voice, uh, she could get married and have legs? Well, this set. I signed a deal, I have to be here until I'm 80. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how expensive it is. That's right, that's how expensive. Hey, I, want, I have a lot of special people to thank in just a little bit. I do want to start off by saying thanks to this incredible studio audience that is joining us today for the start of season 10. I love you guys. It's gonna be a great show. The laundry guy is here. We have some fun surprises. But for the first time in season 10, I'm going to say, hey, Leo, roll the music. Let's get started, everybody. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. For Fallon, everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I am uh, like in the air. Yes. I, I, this is so crazy. This yeah. is just, it's so special. Mm -hmm. It's so great. It is. Uh, you look great. Do, uh, Thank do you, you approve of your new, uh, the, the lighting? Are you comfortable on your couch? Yeah, looks good. Yeah. I was going to say, I am so thankful to no longer be in a high top chair. Because let me tell you, as a short person, I had to climb it every day. <laughs> risk, risk falling off in front of a live studio audience or yeah. having a wardrobe malfunction. So this is much more my style. I you will know? tell you. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you. 
<laughs> they, when they were measuring everything, they did add an extra inch to the couch oh, just to make you, you comfortable. Thank yeah, you, they yeah. measured every. They added a little, a <laughs> uh, little extra on the desk, and That's yeah. Cute. Yeah. Well, look. Uh, before we get uh, too uh, further, too much into this, I want. We have a lot of thank yous. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to get to the hot dish. We're going to get to everything that makes our show our show. But um, obviously, we got uh, the the elephant in the room is what you're looking at, and that is our brand new set that took most of the summer. Here's a little. Uh, it's apps. It's absolutely beautiful, and uh, we'll take it. We'll show you a little tour here. Uh, we shot this over the weekend. Uh, this is our new home for season ten and beyond. Like I said, until I'm. 85. Uh, and, and so many thank yous. I want to start off by saying thanks to a wonderful company called BDI. Carolyn was the main designer of their whole team. Uh, I, I jotted down some notes, some ideas. Uh, it comes as no surprise to anybody that knows me. I had a hand in this. I, I, uh, and I had a very specific idea, and they brought it to life, and they made it 50 times better than anything we could ever have imagined. And they worked their butt. The crews flew in from California. Some nights they worked, no joke, audience until 5.30 in the morning uh, because we were on a very tight timetable. This was built just in August. They had to rip up the other one uh, and put in the new one. Thanks to uh, Infinite Floors, we have some folks here from that company. Thanks to Gopher Stage Lighting. Bill was our lighting director. He's done national shows. He's done everything. He's the best. Uh, he's going to make this look good even when I'm hungover. <laughs> That's what he promised me. Yeah, yeah. not today. Though, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, today? Not no? Today. Okay, good. Ace Electric. Ace Electric, Steiner Construction. Uh, if you notice, the set's not the only thing new. Our buddies, Yam House, uh, kind of revamped our theme for season 10. So I want to say thanks to the guys, our dear friends at Yam House. We hope to bring them uh, to the show soon. Go follow them on social. Go see them live. They're the best. And uh, you also notice with the new show open, we have a new announcer. That is the star of Reba, uh, Person, Place, or Thing, Fargo, Young Sheldon. Our announcer is Melissa Peterman. That's right. Make sure you catch. Make sure you catch the new season of her show, Person, Place, or Thing, debuting this week as well. I love you, Missy. Thank you for doing that. She's also on Happy's Place, Reba's new show on, on yes. NBC. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is where I'm going to try uh, not to cry. I already almost cried. My mom's here, so I was almost uh, crying with that, walking out of the curtain. But I got to thank uh, our team here at Fox 9. And let me tell you, that's why we're not doing Hot Dish, because... Um, all of the people behind the scenes uh, worked way harder than, than, uh, than any of us sitting here in front of the camera. They put in days like you will, uh, hours like you will never believe. Our production manager, Aya, has been here morning, noon, and night. Ted Olson and the entire production team. And then our directors. Uh, now, let me, uh, Thomas and Chris and Steve and Robert and more. And then uh, on top of that list for me, because he's our main director, is Leo. Now, uh, here's what I'm going to say about Leo. Uh, because I'm nitpicky and I'm a perfectionist and I know this about me, poor Leo gets the brunt of my wonderful moods. <laughs> uh, so, uh, because Leo knows that I care and I know that Leo cares. So, Leo, I appreciate you. That top looked fantastic, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. You can relax now, buddy. Uh, look, on any normal day, they're the best, but especially during a summer like we had, the woo foo foof the main produ uh, our main show team uh producer bjorn uh editors uh, rob king who i've worked with since 2000 uh bjorn i've said that already aaron schwab the woman sitting over here uh, fallon uh and uh, yeah i didn't and, do anything yeah. <laughs> but thanks <laughs> i mean i showed up <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to take credit for this. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Yeah, really, what the hell did you do? I mean, really, did you, did you move a plant or something? Did you organize nothing? No, I, nothing, okay. yeah, yeah. We should have taken her name out of that one. Anyway. But uh, if, uh, photographer Eric, who also, because I care about everything, is just the best. That open you saw was Eric. And my right-hand man, 
uh, my right hand buddy. Uh, it would be nearly impossible. It would be impossible to do this show without him. Over the years, he has also become one of my dear friends. This show would be a crap without him. Our, our leader, executive producer, Jeff. Thank you, buddy. John Cattu, Burke, Kimberly. Creative service. Thank you. Kimberly did an amazing job. Uh, our boss is Mim and Kelly. Uh, without Mim signing the check, uh, and now <laughs> Mim's here. Uh, the ink on that check, she's waiting until I finish this episode and then she'll send the check in. Yeah. But oh, is she up there somewhere? Oh no, there's one of them. Yeah. yeah. And finally, um, right is she right there? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> finally, um, the guy who literally worked for. I don't know, 18 months. His name is Nate. And none of you watching TV would ever know Nate because he's our production manager. He's a behind the scenes guy. But when I tell you that this man put in long hours, that is a damn understatement. And we wouldn't, this set wouldn't be anything without him. And we greatly appreciate him. He's up there uh, in our new balcony up there. Hi, Nate. Hey, by the way, by the way, Gerg, can we get a shot in Alve of our balcony? By the way, that's our new thing up there. That's our Jason Show balcony. And what we're going to do here is when audience members misbehave, we're going to put them up there. <laughs> right there. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. Uh, hey, with our new season comes a new expansion of the Jason Show, too. We're happy today to welcome four new cities to our family. Detroit, Milwaukee, Sioux Falls, Quincy, Illinois. If you have family or friends in those cities, let them know. And thanks to everyone in our other cities for continuing to support us. We have great partners in all of our affiliates, Chicago, Orlando, Seattle, Cedar Rapids, Sioux City, and of course, the Twin Cities, Duluth, Rochester, Eau Claire and lacrosse. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And again, this will be my final. I feel like I'm leaving I for know. heaven's sake. Yeah. I know. It's my final day here. Yeah, but it was your in memorium. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Through, yeah. But we want, I needed to get that uh, through because just yeah. we're the knuckleheads on camera. Mm -hmm. All of those people work way harder. So yeah, than we will ever do. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take our first break. When we come back, the hot dish and the laundry guy is here. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Back everybody. Uh, one thing that hasn't changed in, in the new season is hello. We got to do hot topics. We still do the hot dish. So first, some headlines. Taylor Ball is back, which is good news for some, annoying for others. Tom Brady is back, but just on TV. The Goat made his announcing debut on Fox Sunday, and only billionaires in the building. Selena Gomez is now a billionaire, mainly thanks to her beauty brand, Rare Beauty. But first. Super Bowl ready. The football season kicked off this weekend, and we already know who will be rocking the Super Bowl halftime show. And it might, might be a little bit of a surprise. Watch. My name Kendrick Lamar, and I'll be performing at Super Bowl 59. Will you be pulling up? I hope so. You know there's only one opportunity to win a championship. No round tools. Let's get it. That's right, Kendrick Lamar announced the gig on social media on Sunday. He will headline, he'll headline uh, Super Bowl 59 in New Orleans in February. Lamar is uh, uh, one of the best known, best known rappers earning 17 Grammy Awards during his career. This will actually be his second Super Bowl halftime show. If you don't remember, uh, he was part of the hip hop extravaganza back in 2022. Mm -hmm. You're in music radio. This makes a hell of a lot of sense to you. It does. Like I understand some people would be like, oh, he's not as mainstream as like a Drake, but he had a huge year. And funny enough, it does involve Drake. They uh -huh. had quite the beef. Kendrick Lamar very much won the beef and he had a huge huge song not like us so uh, and when they did the show in 2022 he was like the only younger kind of newer art he's not new but newer artists compared to like legends like Dr. Dre and Eminem that were in that performance so I'm not that surprised that he would get it this year um, 
I mean, obviously people think of like Taylor Swift, but she doesn't need to do the Super Bowl halftime show no. and she might be attending again. You never know. So, but also, yeah. I, people were mentioning Miley. She'd be great. Miley would be great because she would be. Every time we do the story, I talk about them. there are very few artists left that A, haven't already right. done it, mm -hmm. that can fill that stage. Yes. You know what, I mean, not fill, you know what I mean, that can hold that stage as a single artist. Agreed, yeah, and she's really, obviously, has amazing vocals, um, and she's, like, tamed down a little bit, so I think she's a little bit more family-friendly again for people who would be concerned about she's her She's not naked on a wrecking ball. Yes, yeah, 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 definitely yeah. not doing that anymore, yeah. I mean, yeah. not yet, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, so I think, but I think Kendrick will be, I think, yeah, polarizing for some people. If someone loves like a classic rock or they love country, Kendrick is probably not going to be their top choice for a halftime show. My vote, my vote was uh, for Juice Newton. <laughs> I wanted Juice Newton. Anne-Marie. Anne Anne-Marie. <laughs> Executive producer Jeff wanted Barbara Mandrell. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Can you, the return of the Mandrell sisters. <laughs> what the hell are they doing? There's one night only. What, what, <laughs> Jeff, what were their names? Those Barbara, Erlene, and Louise. Louise, I think that way. Yeah, there were a lot of Erlenes in that era. Yeah, really. Like my mom's Darlene, then my grandma's like, oh, there, let's get Charlene up in there. And okay, there's a Charlene. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everdeen. Everdeen. No, I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Too much. Yeah, Evie, yeah. Pat. Yeah. yeah all right. Okay. Anyway, mm -hmm. next in the dish, big changes for late night. So after 70 years on the air, the world's longest running late night show is cutting back. So here's the deal. NBC announced that The Tonight Show, starring Jimmy Fallon, will only air new episodes four nights a week instead of five. Now, Fallon, but listen to this. Fallon is the only late night host actually still doing a new show on Friday. The change will go into effect in the fall. It will no doubt no doubt save the Peacock money and give Fallon more time. You know, he can go on, on stand-up tours. This sounds like a big deal. It is a sign of the changing economics of TV. NBC just cut the band out, out of Suck Myers. Oh. So it, it, it is, it is uh, representative of that. But also, we all need to remember, I mentioned Johnny in the cold open there. Johnny didn't do Fridays. You know, Johnny, uh -oh. way back to Johnny, hell, Johnny didn't do Mondays. You know, <laughs> I mean, Johnny didn't do Mondays or Fridays. Letterman didn't do Fridays the last half of his time at, at CBS. I had no idea. I go to bed at 9 p.m. I don't, I, yeah, I, I, do I see like, I see the clips from SNL and from the late night shows on their social medias the next day. So I, I didn't have an, any idea the other shows weren't doing Fridays. Nobody, you are representative of how most people watch. I mean, hell, I, yeah. I watch Wheel of Fortune to go to bed. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a seven o'clocker. So, you know, I don't, no, but I don't watch it live. I yeah. watch it the next day. Right. So. No, yeah. it's, not, it's not a big deal. Like I said, all the other shows have been doing this for years. Next up, let's talk movies, shall we? The fall movie season is off to a near record-breaking start thanks to one movie. If you say his name three times, he will appear. Beetlejuice. The juice is loose. <gasps> I'm going to make you so happy. The sequel to Beetlejuice. The sequel to Beetlejuice dominated the box office in its opening weekend, earning $110 million. It's the second, yeah, it's the second biggest opening uh, for September in history. The total is already more than the first Beetlejuice earned during its entire run in 1988. Wow. Yeah. In, it's an entire run. Are you a fan of that movie? I was a, yes, I was a fan of the original. When it came out, I was a freshman in high school, and it was all we loved, and we loved Winona Ryder. When, mm -hmm. we, we got another story about Winona coming up. Oh, it was everywhere. That's all we talked about. I, I mentioned it a couple days ago. Um, I, I was in band, and we performed at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. Mm -hmm. um, so and on the bus ride to... I'm sorry, why is that funny? <laughs> I have my little French horn, my little polyester outfit, and yeah. But no, I remember the bus ride, that's all we talked about. Beetlejuice. Was Beetlejuice. Okay. It was huge. I will say, though, this isn't getting great reviews. My producer on the radio show, Holly, hated it. Oh. And loved the original. Okay. So. 
It's hard to do. Do you it. like it? I don't remember it very well. Like I remember like scenes. Like I remember Lydia and the red dress. But I need to go back and watch it. I think it's on Max, so I could watch the original and then go see it. Uh, but it wasn't like a top favorite of mine that I recall. So, yeah, I yeah. loved it. It's just I, now with Holly's review, I don't know if I, I might just wait for it to be on streaming. I find that I usually like the movies everyone else thinks are terrible. So I, I do too. Like, uh, yeah, like, I know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm with you. I'm pretty, uh, pretty easy to please yeah. with movies, yeah. Speaking of Beetlejuice, next up in the dish, one of the movie stars is sharing a surprising story about her early days in Hollywood. I, like I said, I'm talking about Winona Ryder. In the same year the first Beetlejuice came out, Winona starred in the cult classic, and you talk about something huge when we were in high school, Heathers. Now, yeah. Yeah. The high school movie about a clique of mean girls gained a cult following over the years after it flopped in 88. But get this, Winona says that not everyone on her team wanted her to do Heathers. She explained in a new video with Beetlejuice co-star Jenna Ortega. Watch. My agent at the time literally got down like on her knees and she's like, please, you're going to destroy well, Maybe she's a of her Scorpio because that's really intense. <laughs> yeah. But I actually did lose a job right when it was coming out. I had been cast in a movie and the director took great offense to it. Oh. Well, a lot of people take offense to the movie now. It there are aspects of the movie that has not aged well, let's just say that. More sensitive audiences. Eat, no, yeah, we didn't, in the 80s, we were different. Oh, yeah. Winona also says she wasn't considered pretty enough for Heathers. And she got a makeover at the Macy's beauty counter before her audition. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, have you ever gotten a makeover at the? I did, like, I feel like years ago, you know, because it's, I feel like it's only been popular to have your makeup done in the past like handful of years. So I remember the first time going in and getting my makeup done. Yeah. Um, and just being, because I couldn't afford anything. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I was like, I was like, if I could get some eye, wet and wild eyeliner and mascara. Bonnie Bell lip yeah. smackers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My mom worked at Carson Peary Scott. Oh. So, oh yeah. So I'd go to the men's clinic counter and yeah. would get anti-wrinkle stuff. Boy, I need that now. But Anti-wrinkle uh, yeah. stuff at what I was age? like, I was 18. Oh yeah, my gosh, yeah. you're like the early young TikTokers now where they're doing full like skin routines at eight yes. years old. <laughs> yes. You're like that, okay. Next in the dish, she's won an Oscar two Emmys, two Golden Globes during her career, but one big name actress says her, for her next role, uh, it's actually going to be her last role. Who am I talking about? Boop. Talk to me about Peabody. I got them up to 19 million. Actually, you'd get quite a bit more out of Peabody. Uh, who are you? Madeline Matlock. Yeah, like the old TV show. Working for you. Hopefully. How do you know the number? There's this funny thing that happens when women age. We become damn near invisible. Oh, dear. I got you. That's how I got through your security. And it's also how I knew the number that Peabody is willing to pay. In. 23. Great. In my heart. That's Kathy Bates. In the trailer for the new CBS show, Matlock. Well, Matlock, it's a new take on the classic show uh, with Andy Griffith. Remember that over there on NBC featuring Bates as a lawyer returning to work in her 70s. Uh, Kathy, 70, she's 76, says she plans to call it quits whenever Matlock ends. Matlock premieres uh, September 22nd. I love Kathy Bates. I do too. I don't want it to I love her. her. I know we were talking about this earlier, but what is your favorite role she's had? Fried green tomatoes. That's mine. Uh, I'm older and I have more insurance. <laughs> when she, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone knows that line, yeah. <laughs> or, like a lesser note, when I loved her in uh, uh, Six Feet Under, okay. she did a cameo in the later seasons. You? Mine's Fried Green Tomatoes. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. That movie's underrated. I love that movie so. It's, it's such so a good, good movie. Yeah. So good. So good. Well, we have a lot more to come, including the one and only, he's one of our most popular guests, the laundry guy. When we come back, back in a moment, everybody.
It is the first day on a brand new set, but knowing us, uh, it'll be dirty by 11. Uh, uh, luckily, we know a guy that can help. Audience, give it up for Patrick Richardson, the launder guy. Well, you're the first guest to I know. touch the counter. I know, it's like, it's amazing. And I'll wipe everything up when I Thank leave. you when you're done. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. it'll be good. How it'll you doing, good. buddy? I'm amazing. Yeah. This is incredible. Isn't Congrats. it beautiful? Yeah, they did a they, they did a great job. Yeah. Well, uh, it's funny when we were talking about having you on for the season premiere, we're like, oh, what's a good overarching topic? And we're like, well, keeping new things clean. So what do we uh, what do we have over here? So I brought you a kit to keep your whole set clean. <laughs> Thank you. We'll yeah. need it. So um, first and foremost, Vinegar and water. You know I love vinegar and water. Vinegar and water is going to be the perfect thing to keep this beautiful desk clean. It's what I'm going to wipe everything up with when we're done. And like your desk, um, the wood laminate, the floors, everything, vinegar and water, it's going to be your go-to because it removes oil, but it's completely safe. So if Milo comes in, you're good to go. You're, we're not using anything toxic. You know, that's kind of my thing. Yeah. So vinegar and water, it is. it should be your... Go to for everything. It's just 50 50. Thank you. I was just going to ask the proportions. Yeah, it's just 50 50 vinegar and water. And it's like cheap, just cheap white vinegar. Yeah, don't, don't get the fancy. Yeah, no, no. I mean, save that to cook with. Yeah. Get the cheap stuff for this. And then um, the next thing is going to be um, rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is going to be sort of, I know. This scares me. Don't be scared. Don't be scared okay. of rubbing alcohol. Okay. Alcohol is our friend. <laughs> Well, uh, it can be. So this is this weekend. It sure the hell was. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. it's coming. You'll see tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is going to take out like sharpie marks. It's going to take um, things off the sofa. Like if somebody sits on the sofa, like in dark blue jeans or something, yeah. and it leaves a mark, you can just take um, a little rubbing alcohol and a towel, spray it on, and it's just going to wipe right off. Not diluted with anything. No, this is 100%. It's, um, you actually can buy rubbing alcohol at 70 or 91% at the drugstore. This is 70%, and that's going to be sort of your go-to for like the upholstery. Basically. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I and didn't know. Now I won't be afraid to use it. Yeah, don't be. And then yep. it's your friend and mine. It's vodka. That's right. Right. So vodka is going to be great for two things here. Vodka is going to be great, or for anybody's house, really. Vodka is antibacterial, which is amazing. So all of the chairs you can wipe down with vodka, which is really nice. But it's going to be great for your gorgeous curtain. Oh, really? Oh, yes. so the curtain, we can clean that? Yes, you can. So if, like, somebody, ha if somebody touches it, you know, they're not supposed to. Yeah. But if they do, vodka, you could, you could actually dry clean with vodka if you wanted to. Really? Yeah, you really could. It's, um, it's, a, stain, it's a great stain remover. It's just not a cheap stain remover. Yeah, don't, and get the, get this the is cheap like, stuff. Right, for the, yeah, college yeah, vodka. Save the kettle one for when the fancy people come over. Right. Just, you know, don't, don't. Well, when, when you come over, I'll clean with kettle one. Thank but you, yeah, the yeah. rest of the time. Um, it's, you know. And also, I always mention this when you uh, mention the vodka. Theater departments use that because it's also, it removes smells too. Yeah, it right? removes odor from any Odors, yeah. I love that. Yeah, and then there's the carpet. So my guess is like, you know, Fallon's not vacuuming between the sets. And <laughs> so Remember, Patrick, she's done nothing. Remember? Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you can actually use a lint roller. And what's really funny, I brought you this one because you can touch up everything with it. But you can actually buy from, in, from janitorial supplies. You can buy giant ones that are just meant for carpet. Really? Yeah. Yeah, hotels use them. Giant yeah, lint rollers? Yeah, they're about this wide, yeah. And they're, they're on a pole, like, for the floor, yeah. Oh, we're getting one of those. Yeah. Okay, so what's... Now, I heard you, you're giving us a tip. I've you, never shared. never shared. Anywhere. Okay. So... This Take is, that, the view. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the tip is this simple. We pour vinegar into a bowl. Vinegar will remove the odor from anything. So, like, if Stephanie comes on and she makes salmon... You can set a bowl of vinegar somewhere, and you could set bowls of vinegar around your set if you wanted to, and the acidic acid in vinegar, when it evaporates, completely removes odor. So when you're making fish at home... Yeah, you could set a bowl of vinegar next to the stove. Oh, wow. I wasn't going to make fish tonight, but now I'm going to. But now to. you can, yeah, now right? I'm going to, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, and then? Well, and then I think the ultimate tip, and I'm gonna leave these, so because then you'll remember all of these, yeah. is both of my books. So, <laughs> shameless plug. No, what? it's... <clears throat> oh, what? What's that? And then I have one final tip. Once everything else is sparkling, you should have something sparkling. Oh, look, is that for me? It is. So. I told you it was my last day. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just live large. Patrick is sticking around up next. He's answering all of your questions, their questions. We'll be right back. Stay with us, everybody. Cheers. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Our season premiere. Well, it's time. Uh, we're in our new... Hello, audience. Hi, everybody. Hello. Good to be here. It is uh, It's time to give up uh, Patrick, give Patrick to you for a little while. You get to answer, answer, uh, ask him questions. Let's welcome our first audience member. Give it up for Jeannie, everybody. Hi, Jeannie. Come right over here. Hello. Go ahead and hold that. What's your question for Patrick? My question is, is how do you get the grease stains out um, after you've dried your clothes? Sometimes I get grease stains, uh, spots all over my shirts, not all the time. But does that have to do with detergent in the washer, the dryer? So it can be three different things. So I'm going to tell you how to fix all three because it's super easy. <laughs> the first one is you could be using too much detergent. Oh. If you're using too much detergent, your washing machine, especially if you have an HE machine, it just doesn't have enough water to rinse it out. So cut back on how much you're using. The second thing it could be is it could be that your washing machine needs to be cleaned out. That's super easy. It's a gallon of vinegar and a bound of borax. Just run it on a cycle and it'll take it out. The third possibility is it's not actually grease at all. It's like something clear like champagne or Sprite or something. And when it went through the dryer, it caramelized. That will also come out. You just need to use a little oxygen bleach. There we go. All three things will work. It's super easy. You're a genius. He's a genius. Oh. Get it for Jeannie, everybody. Right that way. Everybody, by the way, Patrick, just for answering, uh, asking you a question, everyone gets, uh, the people get a little new mug wow. for season 10. That's right. Awesome. We were going to give them bigger stuff, but the, all the money went to the set. Yeah, we don't have them anything left for the budget. Give it up for Lori, everybody. Come on up, Lori. Right here, my friend. There's the mic. Hi. There's Patrick. Ask your question. Hi, Patrick. Hi. I um, have some light blue denim jeans. I just got ink, black ink stains on. What's the best way to take care of that? I'm going to tell you two things. One is rubbing alcohol because you already have it. Yeah. Rubbing alcohol, put a towel on the inside and like douse it. You. This is not a time to be gentle. I mean, go for it. Use a spray bottle, just pour it on there, and most of the time it'll come out. In the rare chance that it won't, if it's like a Sharpie and like it's no. on fabric, you can use a product called Amidex, and you can buy it at the hardware store. Amidex. There we go, Amidex. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Right down there, Aaron will take care of you. <laughs> Don't ask where they go when they go that direction. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually not sure. Aaron's down there. There's a hole we don't know. They may be back in the next segment. We don't know. Give it up for Lisa, everybody. Come on up, Lisa. Come on up, my friends. Right here. I love you. I love you. Thank you for being here. You hold that. There's Patrick. What's your question, friend? Well, my question was asked over there, but I got Ask a different version. Okay. Yeah. So why does Dawn dish soap work for everything? That's actually a great question. Everything. <clears throat> I'm going to twitch. Dawn dish soap does not work for everything. It does not work okay. for your clothes. You, you asked a good question. Well, I know. Okay, so here's the story. Dawn is amazing. There is more technology in New Dawn than there is in your iPhone. It is an incredible product. However, it is wildly acidic. If you were to put Dawn on Jason's suit, the stain will come out. It's completely true, but it will look like it was sanded. So Dawn is too aggressive for like dark colors. Like your t-shirt, Dawn will leave a mark. 
So what's better is to use hand soap. It's still liquid, it's still viscous, it's still gonna give you what you need, it's just not quite as acidic. I mean, I cleaned my bathtub with Dawn, I love Dawn, but I would not put it on my clothes. See, okay. you didn't think you had a good question. Oh, you had one of the best question. questions we've ever had. I love it. Thank you, sweetie. Right? Go down there. Go down in the. Go down in the pit. We'll see you later. <laughs> Give it one more. Give up for Jan. Come on up, Jan. We don't know where it goes. There you go, Jan. Hi. How are you? I'm good. There's Patrick. What do you What do you have? I have a question for clothes that have been through the washer and dryer maybe once or twice. And there's still stains on it. Yeah. That I've missed them. How do I get those out? Okay, so this actually piggybacks on the last question. So we're going to use liquid hand soap. We're going to put liquid hand soap on the stain, and then we're going to sprinkle oxygen bleach on top of it. And oxygen bleach is a powder. We're going to sprinkle it on top. We're going to rub it in with our finger. We're going to let it sit like two hours or all day, whatever, at least two hours. Turn the tap water all the way to hot and let the hot water run straight through it, and the stain will disappear. There we go. You did it. Right down there. Have fun. For more, for more tips, head to Patrick's website, laundryevangelist.com. And if you're watching locally or getting ready to visit us, stop by his store, Mona Williams at the Mall of America. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. One, uh, I know I can speak for the staff here. One of the things that we love about doing the show is when we discover new things uh, on the old Jason show. And it's not just new fast food items. Uh, we don't just do that. Over the weekend, I took my husband, Colin, to Aldi for the very first time. <laughs> Because <laughs> we do Jason show finds. We show you uh, Fallon's done them, uh, Costco, uh, Target today. Finds at your local, R, uh, I almost said Arby's. I'm hungry. Yeah. Your What's local Aldi's. Yeah. And let me tell you, we discovered a bounty of new sweets and one <laughs> cheesy surprise. Watch this. Do you have a quarter? What do you need a quarter for? For the cart. What is this? It's Aldi. You need a quarter. It's not an arcade. It's not a game. My first Aldi find. Cauliflower crust pizza is sometimes disgusting. This one from Aldi is actually really good. The crust, you know, it's still not pizza pizza, but it's pretty good. Oh, so many people told me about the chocolate chip brioche loaf. Look at that. Sure. Wow, bursting with excitement. Oh, that does look good. Toast some for me immediately. I have to credit my mother for these. Hi, Dar. I brought these up on the show before. I'm going to do it again, though. These are the Aldi versions of the Girl Scout cookies, and these are so good. The caramel coconut fudge. Uh, I have tested these, and they are amazing, as are the mint striped fudge cookies. I'm not much of a mint cookie kind of girl, but oh, I would eat this entire situation here. I can't get out of the treat aisle, but these are amazing. I love caramel, I love waffles. Oh, and hello, 349, and they're new. They're so delicious. Leave it to me to find something in the candy aisle, but I actually like the Costco version of these, the flip side ones. So I'm gonna get them, give them a try. How much are they? $3.99. Look at that! A bargain! Yeah, these are like $6 at Target. It's soup season, and for just $3.69, oh, look at these. Gourmet soups, hearty vegetable, tomato parmesan bisque. I'm getting all of these. Oh, that's right. This is the aisle, the Aldi's Finds aisle. I thought we were at a grocery store. I know, look at this. What is that? Right? Oh, I want this for the lake. Oh, you want this? Oh, it's a unicorn inflatable sprinkler. You know, just in case no one knew. Mm hmm. Back to school. Back to school stuff. Look at this. Look at all of the stuff. Little stools for children or very small adults. Oh, 
They even have plush dog toys. Should we get one for Milo? Well, he already got two today. So yeah. We'll oh, look at those. Oh, pumpkin spice everything. Oh, look at all this stuff. Yogurt covered pumpkin spice pretzels. That's disgusting. Water roll, wafer, not water rolls, Jason, wafer rolls. Pumpkin maple spread. Cookie mug toppers. Look, I mean, it's not my thing, but if you love it, Aldi has pumpkin spice going on. And finally, my favorite thing, my favorite Aldi find this month, the charcuterie shop. Look at this. I love this idea. This is great. Everything you need in one spot for a charcuterie board. And the prices are crazy good. This is amazing, Aldi. We love it. So, Colin, you survived your first trip to Aldi's. What did you think? I actually liked it. I wish there was one closer to our house. This is a pain to get here. So, Aldi, build one and down for me. You heard him. We'll let corporate know, Kyle. What? Can I tell you? I am obsessed with that charcuterie board in Yeah, cap. I had no idea. All of it's right there. My mom goes to Aldi all the uh, time. The one time I tried the quarter and the cart, I was like, absolutely not, and I left. Did you? <laughs> I did. I was like, what am I, like, carry it around like an animal? No, I'm not, I don't have a quarter. Who has quarters anymore? So I just left. So I've never been. You left because you couldn't find a quarter? I've never been inside one, and now I'm, got to check it out. You could have asked an Aldi stranger. Someone would have Can given I borrow a, a quarter? I don't have a quarter. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, right. I really did. I was like, no. And that wasn't for television. Colin was genuinely shocked when we pulled in, and I go, hey, do you have a quarter? I just started rolling he goes, a quarter? <laughs> yeah, there he is. I'm like, yeah, we need a quarter for the car. And that's why all these didn't. I remember in the 80s, all these always been like that. Oh. You always needed a quarter to get a cart. Why? They, they want you to get it. They want you to give it back. Are people stealing? Yes. <laughs> no idea. Yes. Yes. Is there like a black market for Aldi carts? I, I don't know, know we'll, about. We'll look okay. on. We'll look on Facebook Marketplace <laughs> in the break. Yeah. I guess so. We're gonna take a break. Okay. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> it's great. to come see us this season. Eventbrite.com. Search the Jason Show and join us. We have a good time. Okay, we're almost done with the episode one. Um, how, you were adjusting your... I know. Audience, you can stay. We'll party after this. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. yeah. You were... There seem to be some adjustment situations. What's going on over here? I didn't expect season 10 to start off with so much clavage, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I, like... I am insecure. I usually don't. I usually, you know, keep a modest neckline up here. But I, uh, I told you. Are you showing boobage for season ten? Yeah, I'm trying to lure in the new audience. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Can we yeah. tell you? Uh, oh, we got a wrap. Oh. We got a wrap. Uh, okay, really quick. <laughs> Fa we uh, tune in uh, later this week. Uh, Fallon and her husband and my husband and I, we shot the newlywed game. Uh, <laughs> let, let's just say. One marriage is fractured. And, and censorship had to come into play. That's right. Yeah. Yep. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> Hey, uh, I knew I would I would do this uh, to kind of mimic at the top of the show for the end of the show. A couple people I forgot. Well, one I purposely saved to this last moment. But I want to say thank you. You know, we have a, uh, a programming director here. His name is Aaron. And without Aaron uh, calling all these stations and getting the Jason show across the country, we wouldn't be across the country. So I want to say thank you to Aaron. He's a great guy. And... 
I said it in the cold open, but in our final seconds here, you know, uh, not just my grandparents, but my whole family have done nothing. I was a weird kid, and then I was a weird teenager, and then I was a weird adult, and uh, my family always had my back. My mom uh, always supported me no matter what I wanted to do, and now uh, Colin and my extended family, and I'm blessed with the best friends my boy could have, including Lisa and Haley and the woman sitting next to me and Jeff. So thanks to everyone who has loved me unconditionally. I appreciate it. Tomorrow, flight deals with a thrifty traveler. Find out when you should start booking your holiday travel. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Bye, everybody. We did it.